Tolly Carr along with Stephen J. Gaither and his HBCU game day presents Rivalry Weekend in HBCU basketball. A lot to get to in the CIAA, but first let's talk about the MEAC. And Stephen, uh, to no one's surprise, it's the North Carolina Central show over there in the MEAC. They have gone undefeated so far in conference. A couple of close calls, but so far no one's had anything for Lavelle Moton and the Eagles. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's uh, it's the same story, a new year, same story. Uh, you know, last year they only won, they only lost one conference game. The year before that, uh, only a couple then. So they've uh, really just dominated the MEAC the last couple of years, and it's continuing again this year. Um, Lavelle mooton has got a lot of new players. Um, start, starting backcourt from last year was gone, uh, so had, he's had a new nucleus and they've had to gel, uh, but they did a good job of keeping things afloat during the non-conference season, and then once conference play has gone on, uh, you know, like you say, they had a couple calls, close calls here and there, but uh, by and large, they've been able to uh, assert that they are the top team in the MEAC and the team to beat. Yeah, you know, Nimrod Hilliard has really stepped up uh, for the point guard position this year. And he runs a real nasty pick and roll with Jordan Parks. I mean, guys have just been out of position. And, I mean, Parks is going to dunk it on you about once a game off that high pick and roll. And uh, they just keep doing it to teams every game. I've, I've probably picked up about three of their games so far this year. Uh, Caramo Javara, he's been playing well. He's the only four-year senior on the team. Right. So uh, those guys are just... You know, and, and the leadership has been has been really important there because you talked about it and, and Coach Moten talks about it a lot as well. I mean, he had nine or ten new guys and, and they had that expectation of being number one and so far they have lived up to it. Right, yeah, they definitely have. I think you look at a guy like Jordan Parks. Last year, he was a complimentary player. Uh, the Jeremy Ingram, the uh, NCCU's all-time leading scorer. Um, Pooby Chapman, the point guard there. So you look at a guy like Jordan Parks, and last year he was dunking and rebounding, and he did it very well. But this year, he's really become a leader uh, on offense. He's been their go-to guy. Uh, like you say, the, the pick and roll with him and Hilliard, uh, working in perfection. Uh, you know, we saw that against a and We saw it against FAMU. We saw it against... Delaware State. It's just a really hard combination to stop. And uh, Hilliard uh, had some big shoes to fill with Poopy Chapman, uh, the all-time assist leader, gone. But uh, I think he's done a very admirable job for someone who's only been in the system a couple of months. Yeah, so they got a few more weeks to go as opposed to the CIAA, who's just a wee bit closer to their tournament. So let's turn our attention there. And the Southern Division, Stephen, does anyone want to win the Southern Division? It seems like whenever we get a front runner out there, they come right back to the pack. Right, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, the Southern Division the past couple of years has been uh, considered the stronger league. And uh, this year, uh, it looks like, you know, I guess we'll have to see at the end of the tournament time, but it could be that way. I mean, you know, there are a lot of nights where, you know, uh, Winston-Salem State will look like they're the top team in the conference. Then there are nights that Livingstone will look like it's the top team in the conference. But then you have a Johnson C. Smith will come and they'll knock someone off. You'll have a St. Aug, who I just saw uh, the other night, and they have a, a really interesting collection of players. A lot of those guys are transfers, some exciting freshmen. And, I mean, there's just, uh, I think there's a lot of parity in the South. Uh, whoever comes out of that is going to be battle tested, uh, and you know. But the thing about the seating uh, is that we're gonna, you, you know, you're going to have to play so many games and so many nights. So it's important to get those early seeds. So whoever uh, can survive that battle and get a night off is going to be crucial uh, as you go into the tournament time. All right, Stephen. We're late into February, or about midway through February. Short month here. Uh, a big weekend. It's that rivalry weekend, especially in the Southern Division. You have Johnson C. Smith. They're going to play Livingstone. They don't like each other. You got Fayetteville State playing Winston-Salem State. We know they don't like each other. Uh, and then you got the big battle of Raleigh between Shaw and St. Aug. You know, if Smith knocks off Livingstone, we will end, and if Fayetteville State wins uh, against Winston-Salem State, there will be five of the six teams at 500 or better in the division two weeks out from the tournament. Yeah, it's uh, pretty remarkable. Um, you know, you look at it, I mean, and it, it, things change so quickly because uh, a couple weeks into the season, uh, the CIAA season, Johnson C. Smith was 0-3. St. Aug got off to a rough start as well, but those teams have come back. And, uh, man, I saw those teams early in the year, and I saw them again this week, and they look like, uh, you know, just a lot more composed and poised, and uh, they've grown a lot. Um, I mean, those teams, uh, you know, they weren't considered to be the, among the conference favorites when the season started, but, uh, you know, they're starting to gel, and, you know, you've got rivalry weeks, so you've got Smith and Livingstone. I've been to one of those games. Uh, it's pure uh, chaos. 
Um, that small gym, it's going to be crazy in there. Uh, you go over to uh, the capital city, St. Aug and Shaw, two private schools uh, with a lot of pride. And uh, St. Aug kind of getting on the roll. Shaw trying to not be the weak link of the Southern Conference. And then, uh, you know, the big matchup you have over there in the Gain Center, um, where Winston-Salem State, uh, they pulled off a win against Shaw. Now they have to face the Fayetteville State team that they beat. Uh, in Fayetteville State, and they're going to want to definitely get revenge in Winston-Salem. So uh, a tough week there. Um, and then, of course, you've got the Northern Division. So it's, it's just going to be uh, really exciting over the next couple of weeks. I'll tell you what, Steve, I fell in love with Shaw early. We, we had that dunk of the year by Larry Richardson, and they've just been in the tank ever since. So I guess I, I put the jinx on them there. Let, let's talk about that Northern Division. Uh, Virginia State uh, looking very good, but you got a lot of teams coming on late. Uh, Chawan very dangerous. Virginia Union, we saw them early. They look bad early in the season. We saw them at the CIAA SIAC Challenge. Uh, just didn't look like your, your Virginia Union team that you're uh, used to seeing over the years, but they're good now. Yeah, I mean, they've won four out of the last five. They beat Bowie State earlier this week, and Bowie State was, uh, you know, is one of the is in the, is in the running for the top of the CIAA uh, Northern Division, um, and you know so they I mean they've only won seven games all year, but they're getting hot at the right time, and uh, you know they could be another team like St. Aug that in the tournament you know they might you know mess around and defeat somebody and hurt some feelings. So uh, Virginia State I saw them uh, earlier in this year as well. Um, they got some good size down low. They got good shooting on the outside. I think that they um, they have as good a chance of anyone to win this tournament. Uh, you saw what they did in the football on the football uh, season and uh, it looks like those guys up in uh, in uh, Petersburg are definitely going to try to win that uh, basketball title as well. All right, so it's prediction time coming out of the south. Who's going who's going to get it done over the next 2 weeks? Who's going to just step up and take it? You know, um wow. Yeah, I mean, I, I really couldn't tell you. But, um ask me after this week. But no, um I think uh, I feel like I feel like maybe, I feel like either Livingstone or Winston-Salem State, I think when all is said and done, those are the two teams in the Southern Division that are going to be going, uh, that are going to be going for that title. Um, you know, Winston-Salem State already has a leg up from a win earlier this year, so, um, you know, if both teams play to their potential, you know, we'll come to the last week of the season and we're going to have some exciting games, but I think it's going to come down to those two in the Southern Division. Well, I saw Livingstone earlier this week, uh, just the other night. Uh, they lose to Fayetteville State in overtime, but I saw Ty Newman go for 38 points, Stephen. He was 7 for 8 from behind the line, and not only can he do it from the outside, he can finish around the basket with either hand. Uh, wow, he looked really strong in, in Livingstone, a very athletic team. They like to press. They like to stretch you out. Uh, but Fayetteville State had a, a very good night and a very good night from the free throw line, which was the difference in that ball game. Ultimately, uh, it's just so hard to pick. I mean, because all these teams have they're so good at different things. Right. Yeah, I will give you one prediction, though. I think that in the CIAA tournament, um, someone who's going to someone who has never played in the CIAA tournament might be the deciding factor. Um, there are a lot of uh, there's a lot of new blood, a lot of transfers, a lot of you know freshmen um, that are really contributing and playing at a high level. Um, and, you know, you get to that CIAA tournament. You know, you always want to talk about tournament experience, but sometimes when you don't know what you're getting into and you're just going out there and playing, that can be very dangerous. So you talk about a guy like Newman for uh, Livingstone who hasn't played in the CIAA tournament. I don't believe uh, Terrell Leach for Winston Salem State. Uh, one of my favorite players, Quincy January from. St. Aug, and uh, there's just a lot of uh, young, raw talent, and I think we're in for a really good tournament in a couple weeks. All right, well, we'll have to take a closer look at it after we get through this weekend and see who survives all the big rivalry matchups. But, man, it's action every night, and uh, it's one of the better seasons that I can remember in quite a while. So I'm going to put you on the spot a little later. We'll get through this weekend, but then of we'll course, touch sure. soon and uh, get ready for our tournament predictions. Sounds good. All right, for Stephen J. Gaither, I'm Tali Carr. This is HBCUGameDay.com.